No one's immune to a crisis. Crisis can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. So what do you do when a crisis hits? Where do you turn? Did you know that even in the midst of a crisis, God provides a place of shelter? He brings comfort to a crisis. That's straight ahead as Arkansas Live starts right now. All this week, we've been teaching on from crisis to comfort. The Holy Spirit revealed this to me for you, from crisis to comfort, to help you see where your comfort is, even in the midst of crisis. Now, we've defined crisis, we've defined comfort, and we'll continue. The key to understanding this is, like I said to the lady in the grocery store when she said, Pastor Caldwell said, is this the new normal? No, it's not. The new, the, the new normal is your revelation of God as comforter and provider. That's the new normal, not the crisis. Crisis come and go. And it's also, like I said, you know, I got tired at the beginning of the pandemic of hearing this phrase, and it went around the world, television ads and all that kind of stuff. It, you know, these trying and uncertain times. Well, if you know what the Word says and you know God, there's nothing uncertain about them. There's uncertainty where people are concerned, what people are going to do and say, but there's no uncertainty where the Word of God is concerned. You know exactly what God's going to do and what He's going to say. And I measure everything by what I read in the Scriptures. How do I know uh, how a situation is going to turn out? Because I read the Scriptures. I look at the book. I read where how God dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah, how He dealt with Nineveh. Uh, I, re I read where what it's like in Noah's day, because Jesus says that we're in the day of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. You find out from God, from His Word, what's going to happen in every situation. And that means there's no uncertainty because you're certain because it's in the, the Bible. So you got to know the Bible and you got to know it for yourself. You can't let somebody uh, tell you uh, what to believe. And if you don't know the truth, the knowledge of the truth makes you free. You won't know what's error and what's true. So let's, let's go back to Mark's gospel. I thought I was through talking about crisis, but I forgot one scripture that I want to deal with before we go on to comfort. In Mark chapter 4, and let's look at verse 37. Mark chapter 4, verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now, I spent... Uh, two years at sea on two different ships in the Navy. Total of six years, two years at sea. <clears throat> and one of the ships I was on, a destroyer, we had to ride out a hurricane. Now, believe you me, that is a ride. <laughs> and of course, I was 20 years old and stupid. I wasn't afraid of anything. I wanted to see the hurricane. So we were, we were ra actually conf confined to our racks. That's what we call them, down below decks. They had straps across your legs and across your chest to keep you from being thrown out on the deck because the ship's rolling like this, and pitch and roll and wham. I mean, it's, it's rough. I wanted to see the hurricane, so I slipped out of my rack. I could have been, I guess, court-martialed if they'd found me. I got up to the bosun's locker because I was a bosun's mate, and I got up to the bosun's locker. I lashed that door uh, so the, the width of a broom, a sweep broom, so I could see the hurricane. Oh, man, the clinometer on the bridge was going like 180 degrees. I mean, the ship, that radio antennas were slapping the water. It was, it was a sight to behold. It was a crisis. And uh, the uh, uh, shipyard in Norfolk, Virginia, where we were based at the time, said, we don't have any more hurricane piers for you to tie up to, so you're going to have to go ride out the hurricane. <laughs> Woo, what a ride. I don't want to do that again, but we did. And, and I kind of identify with that. There rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now, the, I was on a ship that's three blocks long, and it had a draft on it of about 30 feet. So, you know, this was not an open vessel like they were about to be sunk. And Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship, 
asleep on a pillow. And they woke him up. And they said, Master, carest, not thou, carest thou not that we perish? This is a crisis, folks. They're, they're dying here. And, and they said, don't you care? We're about to die. Now, if Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And I did a study on this a few years ago to, only to find out that what Jesus actually said, the, the paraphrase of it was, peace, be still, stop your raging, go back to the normal process for which you were created. The normal process for which the sea was created was not to steal, kill, and destroy. What does that tell you about hurricanes and tornadoes? Anything that steals, kills, and destroys, that's not what God created it to do. And he doesn't use it to prove or teach you something. He's not behind it at all. It's perverted weather. It's perverted by demon spirits that are taking the natural creative forces and, and procedures of, of weather and perverting it and destroying people's lives. So Jesus just simply said, stop, peace, be still, stop this. Go back to what you were originally created for. And it wasn't to steal, kill, and destroy. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Rick Renner did a word study on this years ago, and he said what Jesus actually said to the winds and the waves was, shh. It's what you do to quiet a baby down. Your baby's crying, you go, shh. You do it. Get other people to do it with you. Get a whole bunch of you in a room and go, shh. It has a calming effect. That's what Jesus said. He wasn't afraid. God didn't create that storm to steal, kill, and destroy. He wasn't trying to discipline the disciples. All that fatalism and Calvinism stuff is not biblical. Jesus knew the exact purpose of the waves and the wind. It wasn't to destroy and flood this boat and kill his disciples. So he said, shh, be still. Stop. Cease. <clears throat> and the wind ceased and there was a calm. And Jesus said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So in the midst of the storm, comfort came. Now, here, here's my whole purpose, and I will elaborate on this the rest of the day and tomorrow. The peace and the comfort comes from knowing God and knowing His Word. Now, you can have all kinds of natural skills. When I was in the Navy, they taught us survival skills, how to survive at sea if you had to abandon ship how to survive if there was a fire aboard ship. That, that's really worse. That's, that's a killer aboard a ship is a fire or being hit by a torpedo or something like that. And I remember uh, when Jeannie and I were dating one time, uh, I had rented a boat out at Lake Maumelle and we were just going to go boat riding. Yeah, I rented the, the boat and the motor. And we were just going to go boat riding. Now, Maumelle's pretty big lake, man-made lake. And right out in the middle of the lake, it came up a storm. Rain and wind. And I mean to tell you, it was fierce. And it was a, this boat was a pointed bow boat. And they're the worst. They, they can tip over, capsize real easy. Well, my survival skills kicked in. And I headed for the first little island I could find. I mean, I throttled that thing and we went and I hit that, that beach, that sand, the land. I hit it so hard and I did it on purpose. It pushed that boat halfway up that, that land and I told her to get out and I took the motor off the boat, laid it down and there were two trees. It, it kind of, kind of was like a, a fork and I took that boat and pulled it up. It was an aluminum boat so I could handle it. I pulled it up and jammed it in between those two trees upside down. And we got underneath it. It was a shelter from the storm. 
The storm came and went. It rained, it blew, but it didn't. We didn't even get wet. I mean, it protected us. Now, you can have comfort in your ability to survive, your social skills, your financial skills, whatever. You can be a good business person, whatever. But, but what happens when the crisis comes and your natural ability and your natural skills don't do, do anything for you? I mean, you know, they might, they might, might help you out in a crunch or uh, you might be able to survive something. But what's, what's going on, on the inside? What happens when you don't have any survival skills? What happens when there are no resources? The disciples here were professional fishermen. They knew the Sea of Galilee, called the Sea of Galilee. Really, it's Lake Genesaret. I mean, it's big. It's huge. But it's so big, but it's a, it's a body of fresh water. And they, you know, a storm can come up in a minute, just like out Lake Maumelle in central Arkansas. Well, they were afraid they were going to die. And yet, you know, they had skills. They'd probably been in situations like this before. But the first thing they did was go wake up the master. Hallelujah. Wake up, master. We perish. We're dying here. Can you help us? Jesus stood up and he spoke to the wind and the waves, told it to be still and be calm, and it calmed down. But then he turned to the disciples and he said, why didn't you do this? Paraphrasing, why didn't you speak to the wind and the waves? Why didn't you take authority over it? Why didn't you use your, where was your faith? How is it that you had no faith? <laughs> and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Uh, Jeannie and Ronnie and I, when we were traveling in the early days in the 70s, we, uh, my aunt had a beach cottage down in uh, Alligator Point, Florida, right on the Gulf, just Oh, 30 miles south of Tallahassee. And I, we'd, my family had stayed there for years. When we were kids. We'd go every summer. And, and we, Jeannie and I and Ronnie were taking some time off. We were down in, in North Florida, and South Louisiana, Mississippi. So she, we went down and spent a week there at the cottage, small cottage. I guess the thing's probably not as big as this whole studio. But it was a time of rest and relaxation. We were reading. We laid on the beach, uh, beach and Lonnie and I fish, Ronnie and I fished and put out a net and caught crabs and basket and so forth. And uh, we had seafood and whatever. Well, one day we were standing out there on the beach and uh, we had a, a shortwave radio that I would listen to up in the cottage. And uh, I heard, I heard uh, a land base operator talking to a shrimp boat out in on the Gulf. And he was saying that there was a water spout in between him and where he wanted to go. And a water spout is just a tornado on the water. But it can do damage if you're at sea and if you're in a small boat. And so the land-based operator told the ship captain, he said, you better turn around and go back to where you came from and let this water spout pass. Well, it was going to interrupt our vacation. And in those days, I was learning faith and I was fearless. I was using my faith on anything. I, I even laid hands on my air conditioning compressor one day and told it to work when it died. <laughs> I mean, I would use my faith for anything, for food, for money, for gasoline. Well, we're standing there. I don't want this water spout to come and ruin our vacation. So I go out on the beach and I open my Bible to this scripture and I speak to that water spout. I'm talking. Now, Jeannie's standing there and she heard me. I told that water spout to cease from its forward motion and to turn around and go back out to see where it came from. And then we went back in the house. I turned on the shortwave radio and I could hear that land-based operator speaking to that shrimp boat captain and saying, well, 
the water spout has turned around and gone back out to sea so the path is clear you can come on through. Now that was a supernatural move of God, but it was a, it was a place of comfort for us. Now watch this. It was all based on my knowledge of God and His Word. That's the comfort. The comfort is no weapon formed against you will prosper. No evil shall befall you. No thief can break through and steal. The, the comfort is no plague, no weapon, no virus, no anything can come against you. Nothing can steal, kill, and destroy it. If you have the knowledge of God, if you know His Word, so here are the disciples. They were in a crisis. Their boat was flooded. They were going to sink. And the comforter of all comforters stands up and rebukes the wind and the sea and says, peace, be still. And that same comforter is alive and well in your life and can speak to your situation too. But I want to tell you something. You're going to have to speak to it also. Don't just cry out to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, don't you care? That's what they did. They said, oh, Master, don't you care? We're perishing. We're dying here. And what did Jesus say after he rebuked the wind and the sea? He said, why didn't you deal with this? Why did not you use your faith? Why are you so fearful? So I'm going to say that to you, our audience today. Don't be afraid. Don't be anxious. Don't be fearful. In the midst of a crisis, you start speaking to it. Oh, my Lord, where are we going to get food? How are we going to live? Where are we going to get a job? How are we going to get paid? How are we going to pay our bills? Quit, quit uh, being anxious over that and start speaking to the situation according to the Word of God. You have the authority to use Jesus' name. Now, let me read the word comfort again to you, and then we're going to go over to Psalm chapter 9, verse 9 through 11. Comfort in the midst of trouble, in times of crisis shelter or protection from danger and distress, to give strength and hope, comforted by the knowledge of God. Now go with me over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 30. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, people, flesh, carnality, that's not our enemy. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Well, that stands to reason. That makes sense because if our enemy is not flesh and blood, if our enemy is not carnal, then we don't need weapons of carnality. But our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now that word stronghold there is a wrong thought entered into the mind. It, it, a wrong thought entered into your mind <clears throat> after a while becomes a stronghold. Your thinking is skewed. You're not thinking right. I remember something uh, Brother Hagin told a bunch of us one time. He said he got a letter from John Wayne, the actor one time. This is Kenneth E. Hagin Sr. He said John Wayne was thanking Kenneth Hagin for writing a book right and wrong thinking. John Wayne told Brother Hagin, he said, it helped change my life. Right and wrong thinking. If you think wrong, you speak wrong, you act wrong. If you think right, you speak right, you'll have right. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Wrong thoughts. Thoughts that have become strongholds in your mind. And usually those strongholds are self-imposed or imposed on us by others. We are taught wrong. We base our thinking on experiences instead of the Word of God. We listen to external voices speaking to us, media, journalists, politicians, whatever, and we think wrong. We, our whole thinking structure is based on uh, wrong evidence, wrong information. And that wrong information becomes a stronghold. Now listen to what he says to do to it. Here, here's where the comfort comes in. Pulling down strongholds 
casting down imaginations. That word imaginations means reasonings. He said, well, Pastor Cole, well, Jesus said, come, let us reason together. Yeah, but he's talking about, <laughs> he's talking about spiritual things. He's not talking about carnal things. He's, he's not talking about carnal reasoning, mental assent. You know, Paul said to the Galatians one time, he said, I can't, I can't talk to you about spiritual things because you're carnal. And the word carnal, if you look it up, means carne. It's the same word we get for meat, carne, meat. He was, you know, you could say stretching it. He was calling them meatheads. They were carnal. They didn't understand spiritual things. And therefore, he said, I can't explain spiritual things to you because you're carnally minded. He said, casting down imaginations or reasonings. Listen to this. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Did you get that? Against the knowledge of God. You got to know God. You got to know his word. You got to have the knowledge of God. And that's what brings comfort in the times of trouble. Jeannie's book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, is full of examples of how in situations in her life, she learned to trust in God's faithfulness. Saved her life. Okay, let's go on reading. Casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity, into your thought, into your thinking, every thought to the obedience of Christ. What did Jesus say? What does the Word say? And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Then he goes on and says, do you look on things after the outward appearance? And most of us do. But in the midst of the crisis, don't look at the crisis. Look at the comfort. Look at what God said. And you'll build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, let's go over to Psalm 9. I intended to start there today, but we're kind of behind. Psalm chapter 9, and let's look at verse 9, 10, and 11. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord. You can thank God ahead of time. You can praise God for his comfort, for his knowledge that God will not forsake you. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the righteous begging bread. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwells in Zion. Declare among the people of his doings. So you can, when you have the knowledge of God, when you know the comfort of God, you know, he's your refuge. Psalm 91 says, he's your refuge, your fortress, your God. In him will you trust. There's the comfort in the midst of crisis. So from crisis to comfort is when the storm arises and the sea and the snow and the virus and pandemic, when all that rises up in the midst of that, your comfort is in knowing God, knowing his word, knowing what he will say, what he will do. He said, I'll, Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you don't need to wring your, 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 your wrist and say, oh, Lord God, please don't forsake us. Don't leave us. Don't leave us in this mess. He said he wouldn't. So you have to read enough of his word, enough of his promise. Go to him and sit in front of him and open his word and say, now, now tell me again, God, what you said in this. What's the revelation here? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You're going to be my comforter. That's what we're going to deal with tomorrow. We're going to talk about it who the comforter is. In fact, there's a lot of scriptures here that I have not read yet. If, if, if I close out the last few minutes that we've got here, about three minutes, go to Psalm 32. Psalm 32, and let's look at verse 7. Psalm 32, 7. 
He gathereth the waters of the sea together. As a heap, he layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all his inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. That, that, can, that can reference uh, uh, what Jesus said when he spoke to the winds and the waters. Go to Psalm 41 and let's look at verses 1 and 2. Psalm 41, verse 1 and 2. Blessed, it is, blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. I will, I will never have a time of financial trouble because I have given to the poor. And the Bible says when you give to the Lord, I mean, when you give to the poor, you're lending to the Lord and the Lord will repay. Blessed is he that considers the poor uh, those that are weak or sick. Uh, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and you will not deliver him into the hand of his enemies. So that's the good news. That's the comfort. And then let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, we'll probably have to start there. Uh, tomorrow. So join me. Uh, yeah. Second Corinthians chapter four, join me for tomorrow's Arkansas line. And we're going to finish up crisis from crisis to comfort. The comfort is the knowledge of God concerning your situation. If you know the knowledge of God, if you know God, if you know his word, then he will comfort you. He promised he would, he would take care of you. So it doesn't make any difference what the pandemic's doing. It doesn't matter uh, how many people fall uh, at your side or right hand. God is going to take care of you. He said he would never leave you or forsake you. And you build that up in your spirit, in your heart, so that you know no weapon formed against you will prosper. No evil shall befall you and no plague come near your dwelling. I'll see you tomorrow on Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord over Arkansas and where, you're, where you live and where you're watching, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.